When the NCAA tournament begins, the announcers, all of us, use terms like Cinderella to describe the underdogs who overachieve and knock off the bigger, more traditional big conference superstars. Certainly that was the case in 2006 when the so-called experts called little George Mason a giant killer. Well, to be honest with you, GMU is not all that little. It's a big commuter school and has more than 32,000 students, twice as many as Georgetown. But still, when George Mason made that run to the Final Four, it was the most magical run in the 72-year history of the NC2A tournament. It had all the trappings of a Cinderella story, with one mid-major exception. This fairy tale was indeed real. It obviously was a feel-good story. Unless you were physically there, I can't describe it. I describe it, the run of the Final Four is the gift that keeps on giving. George Mason's remarkable run to the 2006 Final Four began before the season even started, when head coach Jim Laranega summoned a sports psychologist to speak to the team. And he asked the players to tell him what they thought they could, could accomplish, what their dream was for the season. And Lamar Butler said, I, I dreamt we got to the Final Four. Like many a Hollywood script, this story had a rather modest start. A late season win at Wichita State put the Patriots in the headlines and into the top 25 for the very first time. It's a great accomplishment, but uh, hopefully it's, it's the, not the last of our goals to be achieved this year. Weeks later, George Mason was invited to the big dance as an 11 seed, its first NCAA tournament berth since 2001. The first stop, Dayton, Ohio, for a date with Michigan State. Before we left uh, for Dayton, I promised the players that I would have more fun than any other head coach, and I wanted them to have more fun than any other team, and I think uh, we did. An upset win over the Spartans, followed by another over number three seed North Carolina, and George Mason was in the Sweet 16. Glass slipper, anyone? There's probably never been a better definition of the concept of team than the George Mason run to the Final Four. Verizon Center, just 20 miles from Fairfax, was the site for the regionals. And after a convincing win over Cinderella wannabe Wichita State, the Patriots were in the Elite Eight. Just one win from the Final Four. Mason Nation was giddy and growing. You'd walk across campus and you'd see four biochemists talking and you'd say to yourself, gee, I wonder what they're talking about. You'd get closer and they were talking about the last game or the next game. Everybody was talking about it. And then the, the song started playing and people started believing, hey, this is, this is our destiny. And what would a great movie be without a superb soundtrack? Living on a Prayer. Every time I hear it, it's like this, that George Mason song again. It's crazy. I was born in New Jersey, and Bon Jovi only grew up a little bit down the street, so I know a lot of his songs, but that one in particular, yeah, it kind of stands out. The Mason pep band's version of the 80s Bon Jovi hit, Living on a Prayer, took on a life of its own. More than halfway there, the Living on a Prayer Patriots had one more impediment in their path. Connecticut, the top seed and perennial power. Save for a few UConn fans, Verizon Center was all Mason that day. I remember a couple of times in the huddle, Coach Hill was saying something, and I don't even know what he was saying because it was so loud. But uh, I've never been in an environment like that. 20,000 plus fans screaming, you know, GMU. With Lamar Butler leading the way, George Mason won in overtime. The unthinkable had happened. George Mason was going to the Final Four. An event like that had not occurred on a college campus at a mid-major, so-called mid-major school since Indiana State with Larry Bird went in 1979. On the Verizon Center court, an embrace that Lamar Butler can still feel today. The hug with my dad. I mean, people don't know the hard work that we put in since the time I first picked up a basketball. It was basketball, basketball, basketball. I sacrificed a lot. My parents sacrificed, sacrificed a lot to make sure that I would be successful in the game of basketball. On to Indianapolis it was. And after touching down, George Mason touched off a Final Four frenzy. Come on over here. Come on over here. How is this? Great. You know, filming everything, taking it all in. This is amazing. A storyline straight out of the movie Hoosiers was playing out in the Hoosier State. 
I can't find a word in the dictionary to describe it, but if I want to pick a word, I would say unbelievable, amazing. Our players enjoyed being in the spotlight. Uh, they were very, very humble, uh, but also very, very excited and, and very highly motivated to continue the journey. In this real life movie, there were plenty of subplots with family ties. And I had yet to see my grandson James, who was born in February during the season. And uh, on April 1st, the day we played Florida, uh, Jay and Andrea, his wife, flew from Italy and arrived at Indianapolis just before game time. And I got a chance to see my grandson for the very first time. So that was very, very special. Mason's opponent, the foil in this story, was Florida. Adhering to their own script, the Gators led throughout and won en route to the title themselves. After the game, Butler walked off the court in tears. We should have beat Florida. Go to the national championship, host the trophy up, have a national championship ring on my finger. While the run was over, the residual effects remain five years later and perhaps forever. The thing that struck me the most and to this day strikes me the most is the pride. People felt good that they were part of George Mason and we had become a brand name. Anybody who didn't know George Mason before the run to the Final Four learned George Mason during that month. If you say George Mason basketball to people, they'll say, oh, the Final Four, yeah, oh, wow, we remember that. It was great. We estimate that we got about $190 million of free publicity during the run to the Final Four. There hasn't been a day that's gone by since uh, 06 that someone hasn't approached me and said, I was at your UConn game when you made it to the Final Four, or I was in Indianapolis, or that was the greatest run in college basketball history. And so people remember it. It, it obviously was a feel-good story. And we love to, to share the George Mason story with anyone who will listen. So we've given you a look back and a view inside some of the most successful coaches in the history of the game and one of the greatest runs you'll ever see. Now it's time to watch the tournament unfold, so check your brackets and enjoy the games. I hope you enjoyed our special because we, all of the names you will see here on the screen, sure tried to take you beyond the bubble. I'm Tim Brandt. Good night, everybody.